Our friend Sarah died of cancer and it destroyed us because she was like the best of us. She was a teacher, small group leader, worked with an immigrant family. She was smart and bubbly and fun and just like the best person to be around. And then she got cancer really quick and it, and she died. And uh, we had these standby passes and we, as a staff, some of us were thinking about going to Jerusalem to film a couple projects. And the week after she died, we looked at the flights and they were all open and so we, we just went, a group of us, to kind of do this project but also to take a moment to go on a pilgrimage a bit. And we stayed in Old Town Jerusalem um, right on the Via Della Rosa, which is the street that's dedicated for the journey of Jesus in his death walk from being condemned to the cross. And, and every day we would walk that path kind of contemplating and praying and just being in our grief together. And I remember one night we uh, were just walking around and because we weren't there to be tourists, like we were just, we just like wander around and we like wandered to the wailing wall. And here's all these people coming to this wall and praying. And I remember I walked up to the wall and in such a holy place, I just, I wanted to have like a really meaningful prayer, right? Like I wanted something that could help me identify and perfectly speak the pain that I felt and I, I remember walking up to this wall and I, I had nothing. It was just like completely blank. I was like, I don't even know what to pray. And it was so disappointing in that moment of grief to go, I don't even know what to do. And I remember this guy, um, this Jewish man, he came up next to me and I don't know his story and I don't know how often he um, comes there and prays, but he began to do the most like guttural prayer like I had ever heard and he sang it and it had this cadence and this feeling to it that was so powerful and I just sat there and I listened to him pray and I remember at some moment I just said, God, could this be my prayer? I don't understand it, but it sounds like my prayer. Can I just piggyback on his prayer? And so we came back from Jerusalem um, as pastors and a staff that had to lead a church. And before us lay a week, weeks of services and liturgies and prayers that we felt very ill-equipped for. And we realized we had to get different things. Like our worship leaders were like, we need to find different songs. And so they looked for songs and they found these spirituals that came out of like oppression and slavery that were just these laments. And we commissioned our poets and our writers to write new prayers, new benedictions, new calls to worship for us. I myself uh, did a series on the Stations of the Cross and I made these paintings that were based on like what it felt to walk the Via Della Rosa. And I also made this interactive multimedia experience for Good Friday to, to have a sit in the place of pain and grief of death. It's like that we would really feel it together. And we were in this season for a while and then it ended one day. And I remember looking and we went and did other things and sang other songs and did other prayers. But I remember looking back at that time and going, look at all the art we made because art helps us deal with our pain. Maybe you're like me, but right now I have a playlist that I've made that I listen to over and over and over, over again, right? It's a series of songs that I've collected that I, that I want to sing, that I want to listen to, because I feel like it perfectly reflects like the place that I'm at in life, right? Like we'll say this, we'll be like, that's my song, right? And what we're saying is, that's the song I most resonate with right now. And it can be fun, it can be sad, whatever, it's, but I, like it perfectly describes my life. 
This is what art can do. It gives us the words, the images, the emotions that help us understand our own lives. They become our deepest prayers, I would say, a vehicle to approach God with. Allow me to generalize a bit, but as the church, we're really good at making positive things, right? Like our sermons are about victory and overcoming and our songs are uplifting and our images are kind of simple and safe and, um, and this is fine, right? I mean, I would even say like we're coming together to worship a God that says, take heart in this world because I've overcome the world. So yeah, we're there to, to kind of pull each other out of the darkness. But I will say that when we gather together, statistically, you know, one in 10 adults is probably suffering from depression. That there are people there who are going through pain and trial, medical issues, death, miscarriages, divorces. We can't ignore the need for vehicles to approach God with in our most darkest hours. I mean, the Bible is filled with passages about this, right? I mean, we have Psalms and Ecclesiastes. I mean, for goodness sake, we have a book called Lamentations that's right in the middle of the Bible. I think the temptation for churches is to move quickly through hard times, difficult circumstances, grieving situations. I mean, sometimes I think that the unspoken motto of a church service is, is life kicking you in the nuts? We'll come to church and we'll make you feel better, right? Because we're looking to sell something that succeeds. The church is not here to be spiritual Prozac. The church exists to communally be with a God that says, I want to heal your brokenness. I want to restore and transform you. I want to bring life from death. But often we need to be able to name our death before we can be resurrected from it.